Coming up, Google finally released Android 11 Beta 1, and they didn't need an event to do it. I'm gonna show you some of the newest features next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Hey everyone, I'm Jason Howell, and I happen to have Google's newest version of Android 11, Beta 1, running on my Pixel 4 XL. It was very easy to do. I'm gonna show you how to do it if you wanna test it out yourself, but this is a big deal. It's a big moment because prior to this, all you had were their developer previews, and those are really cutting edge. It's really entirely meant for developers. And so you end up with a whole lot of crashes. I would not even think to run the developer preview on my everyday phone that I rely on in the real world. So here we are to beta one, and does that change things? Well, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. I do have it installed on the device that I live my life using. So I'm taking a little bit of a risk. You're going to want to ask yourself whether that risk is worth it if you want to check out some of the fancy new features that I'm going to show off today. Uh, Google was supposed to unveil all of this at an event a few weeks ago. Ultimately, they were not able to do that uh, due to the state of the world right now. And I think it was a really good move that they kind of postponed it to make way uh, for the voices that are participating in all the protests around the country. So good on Google. Google for doing that. Um, and they just decided to release a blog post and let the beta uh, speak for itself. So why don't we do that? Let's dive in to Android 11 beta one. All right. So first of all, which devices can even do this? Well, the Pixel 2 through the Pixel 4 XL, which I have here, are compatible with the new beta. There are a few third party OEMs who have announced compatibility among them, the OnePlus uh, 8 and 8 Pro, which I have right here. Also the Poco F2 Pro, the Xiaomi Mi 10 and 10 Pro, and the Oppo Find X2 series have announced that they are going to have the beta on their devices. It's more of a manual process than what I'm going to show you here. For Pixel phones, the installation is super easy uh, with the beta series. Once it moves into beta, everything becomes much easier. Before you had to install it more or less manually, or you could use something called a flash tool, which I've tried many times and for whatever reason, never ends up working for me. Uh, but now all you gotta do is open up the Chrome browser and enroll by visiting google.com slash android slash beta. And this is that page in Chrome on my device. If you scroll down, you'll find a little section with your eligible devices. Of course, my Pixel 3a is there. It's already over. Uh, so I could opt out if I wanted to. The 4XL, which is this device is in. Uh, my Pixel 2XL, I could tap to opt in. Eventually, within like even a few minutes, I'll get a system update icon that will uh, download that update. Once I restart, boom, I'm in Android 11 beta one. It's really easy to do. Now, the big question here is, should you do it? Depends on how much you enjoy uh, an imperfect and in some cases broken experience. Personally, I'd say no unless you're a developer or unless you're really interested in living, living on the bleeding edge uh, and you don't mind living with some major bugs. I did it anyways because that's how I roll, so I can show you this, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna start with the issues that I've encountered. So my five days with beta 12, I've definitely encountered some really strange things and in many cases, deal breakers. Number one, Google Pay is not gonna work or at least it's not gonna work effectively uh, and all the time. It, when I first updated, I got a message that said contactless payments are no longer valid, would no longer work. Uh, however, I also did some searching and found that if you go into, uh, let's see here, Google Pay's information uh, in, the, in the settings, and then you go into storage and you clear storage and clear cache, it might reset it. So I tried to do that. And now when I go into Google Pay, I don't get that message anymore. So I haven't tested it at a store. Here's my Google Pay interface, but it used to have a big message here that said that I couldn't use it anymore. And actually, Google has acknowledged that Google Pay is not working in Android 11 Beta 1 and that they are going to make an update available soon to activate Google Pay compatibility. So 
totally a your mileage may vary sort of thing. It may work, but it's probably not going to be dependable. Number two, I've encountered some really strange camera quirks, particularly with video recording. I'll be video recording for maybe five, six seconds, and then suddenly the video recording will stop, and it'll say that there's an audio device that's interfering with the recording. So if you value long-form video recording in the camera app, I would say you might want to steer clear of Android 11 Beta 1. You might end up in a similar situation where suddenly it just decides to cancel on you and not work. And sometimes it works for me, and sometimes it does the cancel thing. So right now it seems to be doing okay, but I definitely caught some footage of that, so take a look at that. And then finally, and this is totally expected, not all apps and games work on Android 11 Beta 1. Developers haven't done the work to make it totally compatible. So you probably expect that. Now, uh, before I get into the things you haven't seen before, I just wanna touch really quickly on some of the stuff you have seen before to show you how in a very quick sense, it's been updated. Number one, uh, notable is the conversations layout in notifications. So here's my notifications sh uh, shade. And I have different, uh, different apps, WhatsApp, Hangouts. This is a Facebook Messenger. They all end up here in the conversations area. You can also see down below, they've done some work on cleaning up how these different sections are separated. So we've got alerting notifications, we've got silent notifications, you still have your history button, everything's looking good there. But this keeps all of your conversations into this short little area. And that's great. What you also see here is another feature that's been built out more is the bubbles functionality. Certain apps allow for it. Facebook Messenger in this case does allow for it. If I tap that little circle icon right there, boom, it appears out in into its own bubble and we're all good there. I can drag it around and open it and everything's good or, or I can swipe down to dismiss. Now that is something that developers have to bake in specifically. So if they haven't done that, that's not gonna be compatible. That's why Hangouts and WhatsApp do not have uh, that little circle icon. They haven't baked it in yet. So keep that in mind. That'll happen over time. Number three, yes, the integrated screen recorder is still here in quick settings. I had to add it specifically with that little edit button in order for it to be there. But the whole interface is the same. I love the changes that they've made by embedding a screen recorder into the software. So that's really great. And then when you take a screenshot like I just did, you get this updated kind of area to share and edit. If I tap edit, I get kind of an updated edit area uh, that I can draw on it and send it out. So that's kind of nice how they've cleaned that up. So those things you've seen before, but what about some of the stuff that you haven't seen in Android 11 beta one? This first one is definitely my favorite, smart home controls in the power menu. So I'm gonna hold down my power button. And as you see, we have the power menu with all the power features up top. Uh, we've got my Google, my Google Pay information in the middle. Who knows if it works if I went to the store, but there it is. And down at the bottom is this new section, which is all about controlling your smart home. This actually taps into uh, Google Home, the app. These are all, you know, this is my smart home laid out in an app inside of the app. That ties in to the power button menu. So what I have down here are the six uh, elements of my smart home that I want direct control over anytime I hold down the power button. So that's great. I can swipe to turn the lights down, turn them up. That's essentially all lights in my entire house. Uh, I could turn them off, turn them on by tapping them. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the living room and the den. I'm going to keep the master bedroom because that's where I am right now. Um, so you can have direct control over activating these things. If I tap and hold, it takes me through to here. And this is a still a little buggy in layout, but I could, I could select the colors if I wanted to, that sort of stuff. Um, if you want to change any of this layout, the three buttons right here, the three dots, that allows me to add controls to this area or edit, which is essentially, you know, kind of moving things around, changing the order, that sort of stuff. So really great to have smart home controls right at the forefront. I love this. I love not having to go digging for these controls. And I think that I'm going to use this a whole heck of a lot because we have a lot of these lights throughout our home and uh, we might get more. So there you go. All right. Number two, smart app suggestions at the bottom of your home screen. You're looking at it right now and you're like, nothing's really changed. So I'm gonna go ahead to illustrate this. I'm gonna go on this bottom row and drag this camera icon over into a new page here. 
And when I do that, you see how it was replaced with a camera icon with a little shaded circle around it. That is now a smart app button. If I do this with all of them, you'll see that Android is making a determination of the apps that I use most. And it does this over time. It smartly identifies what apps that Android thinks I'm gonna want at any given moment based on my usage prior. Now, I'm not a huge fan of smart features like this inside of a launcher. Personally, I've used features like this and I, they just haven't really uh, been very useful to me. I like the stability of having these apps in a single place where I know like muscle memory wise, they're always gonna be there. But uh, Google's pretty good at this stuff, so I'm willing to live with it. I haven't really tried it out myself uh, in a long form sense yet. You should definitely check it out too. If you want any of these to be pinned, by the way, you just tap and hold and hit the pin button and boom, it stays there. Or I could swap, you know, swap one of these down here and that will never change now. Chrome and camera will never change, but these three will. So you can kind of mix and match and make it whatever you like. Now this one's kind of interesting, media control uh, in the device. So if I go to my main screen and I launch YouTube Music, I'm gonna go ahead and play some copyrighted music, but it's the volume's down, so I won't be identified for it. The Beatles are playing. Now while that's playing, if I pull down my notification shade, you see that the controls for that media player are embedded inside of the notifications pane. It's like another notification. This is how it's been for a very long time. I'm gonna pause that. There is a new feature in here, but though you have to go into the developer options in order to open up and keep in mind developer options, you unlock that menu by going to build and tapping on it seven times. Once you do, then you go to system, advanced, and developer options, and boom, we have this whole hidden menu. You can see an earlier episode of Hands on Android to see uh, all about this menu. But in here, there is a media section. Let's see here, I gotta scroll down. There we go, media section. Now that's this feature right here, media resumption. When I toggle that, and wait a second, cause my phone is gonna kinda, well, it has in the past, it kind of turns, the display goes off. Ah, there we go. When I swipe the notification, the display goes off. It wants me to log in again, so. And now once the phone has kinda done its cycle, then you can see that the media controls are now embedded in the quick settings up top, the shortened version of it. Pretty basic media settings. If I open that up, I get a more expanded media setting area uh, integrated with quick settings. Quick settings is you know reduced to two lines. Uh, used to be kind of a little bit more than, than that with this in place. But now we've got up here, we've got full media controls, thumbs up, thumbs down, seeking, play, pause, all that stuff. You also have this button right here, which is pretty nice. If I tap that, this is how I can determine where that media is actually playing. I might have uh, been connected to my Bluetooth headphones and listening to the Beatles. And then I put my headphones down on the table and came upstairs and then I want to listen to it through the phone speaker. Well, if the phone is still connected to the headphones, um, instead of like going downstairs and putting the headphones away, I could just open this up and select phone speaker and that music will transition and transfer over to the phone speaker. So easily transitioning between Bluetooth destinations, which isn't always the easiest thing in the world. Nice to have that integrated. And finally, Recents, the Recents page, which is also known as the multitasking screen, got a little bit of a facelift. Uh, below the app cards, this used to be the Google search and that row of apps that I was showing off earlier. Uh, now it's just these few buttons. Screenshot, of course, takes a screenshot of whatever the Recents uh, app and focus is share takes a screenshot and then sends it, you know, brings up the share intent. So you can send that out to someone and then select allows you to select any of the text on this particular screenshot. And you can, you know, I can select as much of it as, as I want, copy it out, all that kind of stuff allows you to kind of integrate, uh, interact with that a little bit. So pretty neat stuff. Uh, really liking where this is heading. So there you have it. Um, you know, like I said, it's really up to you whether the risks of running the beta on your device are worth it. You're going to run into snags, no question about it. For me, I'm really bummed to not have Android Pay. I'm really bummed that my video recording is not working perfectly. I have a good feeling that Google is going to release something relatively soon, but even if they don't, 
right? Then I'm just waiting for beta two and I hope they release it then. All in all, it really just kind of proves that betas are still bleeding edge. It's still cutting edge and not 100% meant for consumers. It is after all meant for developers. So you're really taking a chance. You're taking a risk and you might just be best to wait and let me do the heavy lifting for you. And I'll show you what's cool uh, as they come out. Send me your questions at hands on Android at twit.tv. You can also subscribe to this show by visiting our show page, twit.tv slash H O a for hands on Android. There you'll find all the ways to subscribe and any of the podcatchers uh, that you might be using, as well as jumping out to YouTube and subscribing there. Thank you all for watching Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. We'll see you next week. Hey, folks, it's Micah Sargent here, co-host of Smart Tech Today right here on Twit.tv. Every single week, Matthew Casanelli and I sit down to talk about smart tech for the week. That's right. It can get kind of complicated, but there's a lot of news out there. There's a lot of products to dig through. There are a lot of questions to answer, and we try to do that all every single week. From voice assistants to wearables to smart garage door openers and lights, there's so much to cover and, well, so little time. So be sure to check it out. It's twit.tv slash STT. Huh, that rhymes.